injuries or dangerous situations need to be brought to my attention. So if you see something that you think might be potentially dangerous, whether it's someone's behavior or a machine that doesn't seem to be operating properly, or maybe it's a broken hand tool, bring it up to me and I will look at it and either if it's a, something I can repair or fix, I will do that as quickly as possible. If not, I will take that item out of service and that way the next person who comes along is not going to endanger themselves. We always have to be aware of those people working around us. So that's one of my safety rules. Be aware of what's going on around you. Listen. Watch. And for example, if someone's using an angle grinder, you want to make sure that, that before they start work, that uh, you protect yourself and make sure that you're ready for that. And of course, there's common courtesy that should be shared. If you're about to use an angle grinder, make sure that the people around you are aware of that and make sure that the sparks are directed in an area away from people. Get permission first. On all machines, I require that you come and ask to use them first. And there's also some signs which are um, located near some of the other hand tools that we have. For example, the bench here, the hole punch. When you see a sign like this, please respect it. Come and get permission. Get permission first rule allows me to see where students are working within the shop. I expect you to come and ask to use the machine. And in that way, I can see if you're pro properly prepared, safety-wise, long hair, loose clothing, eye protection, etc. And making sure that you're using that machine to do the proper task. And uh, it's my hope that by using the machine for the proper task, you'll get better results on your projects. Number eight, if you're in doubt, come and ask your teacher. Now, I expect you to follow along in the instruction that we do and the demonstrations that I give because that prepares you best for completing your project and doing the tasks. But if, by chance, you've missed something or have forgotten how to do it, please come and ask me. It's more, the more important thing is that you're prepared to do the work safely. And by not understanding how tools work or procedures um, work, you put yourself at risk. So if you've forgotten how to use a tool or a machine, come and ask and I will help you. And please do not experiment with tools and equipment. You must be careful in the welding areas. Make sure that there are no combustible materials before and after you weld and make sure that you clean up all the welding areas before you leave. Do not leave hot metals lying around. They can be dangerous to yourself and to the next people that come along. Show courtesy and clean up your work area. Students must get permission to leave the classroom. If you have not talked to me directly, you are in violation of this rule. Do not get caught in the hallway without a hall pass. Under no circumstances should you be out of this classroom without me knowing. 
And when you return, make sure the hall pass goes back in its proper location and you come and talk to me directly and say, Mr. Basso, I'm back now. That is the proper procedure and that allows the next person to be able to go. In case of emergency, we will leave as a group. You must know the proper procedure for leaving the shop. When we leave, we're going to go the quickest way out of the shop, depending on the, the emergency at hand, and go out to the field where we will stay together as a group. At that time, I will take attendance. Under no circumstances will you wander away from our group. That means do not go and talk to your friends. Stay with us. Violation of this rule is serious. I'm going to talk to you about air hoses today. We have rules about air hoses and the proper usage of them. Under no circumstances do you use air hoses directed at your body or anyone else's body. And I'm going to show you the proper air hoses that you are able to use. In general, air hoses are not to be used without me knowing. So you need to get permission first. Air hoses are located throughout the shop and they're designed to be used for a multiple of purposes. We have lots of air tools that are powered by them and we can also use air nozzles which facilitate the cleaning of benches and machines. But remember, safety is the utmost uh, concern. You must protect yourself before using air hoses. Here are some typical air nozzles that you might encounter in our shop. This is the one that you're going to be able to use. It's got a black tip, so if you see a black tip, chances are that's one you're going to use. And this one is a get permission only. On, on rare occasions, I let students use these to clean up machines, provided they protect themselves. The air hoses that you will encounter look like this. And this one has a black tip, and it's located by my teaching desk. And if I push that button, the air comes out. Never point the air hose at anyone. Now to connect these hoses, and in the situation where you will be using them, you'll be using yellow hoses only. If it's got a yellow hose, that means it's suitable for you to use. Slide the coupling, push, release. Just slide, push, and release. And that way the hose is connected and allows you to connect multiple hoses together over long distances. And if I push this nozzle, air comes out. These black nozzles are safer than the other ones, provided that they're used correctly and responsibly.